Can we talk about the fact that this same Texas went number one? It was like number one for 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 two weeks, and I get in a few weeks we're gonna have a new Beyonce album, which is like just weird to think about. I don't know why we've elevated Beyonce to this almost like godhood of like she can only do things every four plus years. <laughs> it's just no. Weird. This is kind of scary. Like this is scary. Never happened. This is unprecedented for all these mega stars to keep like outdoing themselves. And first of all, Taylor Swift and Beyonce are in like a. A, a thing of their own right now they're putting out albums every six months and i'm like okay this is not like do y'all know the like the, i don't know i i mean the pressure they must feel is just ridiculous. i just think the world is ending and they're trying to get their yeah. music out really quickly before it all goes RuPaul is opening a bunker <laughs> in Wyoming. Bunker, <laughs> Wyoming. Um, can you imagine if they franchise out to Wyoming at the Jeffree Star Ranch? Oh my uh, god, that'd be cute. <laughs> oh, now you uncanceled Jeffree Star. Is she not canceled? Is she canceled still? I mean, y'all be can- uncanceling. No shade. Y'all be uncanceling. I mean, she's uncanceled in my household. <laughs> the girls are going to Jesse Ware, so. <laughs> no shade. I just think canceling as a concept is a little, um, it's like still in, but it's like kind of out. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I mean, like I said, I don't take it seriously because we all forget about it. Again, I'm not going to uncancel like Amy Schumer. I think I'm okay with never seeing Amy Schumer in my life ever again. And I hope no one books her ever again. Well, that's just because how she looks like. I think her character is something I want to speak to. You know, I I don't know. Obviously, I would be on a fence about a character like Amy Schumer, my Gemini sister. Anyone that's a Gemini <laughs> gets a pass for me. Not like a pass, a hard pass, just like a little pass. Because, you know, there's something in there that's just a little kooky. Amy Nunu Paris Schumer. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are all one. No, because y'all Trump. are not going to act like at one point she was that eating. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> she had one funny joke in one comedy special. Like, there was an era. Now, I can't remember a joke. I can't remember anything. I did go said. see that Heartbreaker movie that she was in, the yellow. I just remember the yellow, uh, the yellow flyer. I think, uh, I think I just remember watching the TV show or something. The but, Amy you know, show? Was it the, called the Amy show? It was, it was like Inside Amy Show. It was something, do, right? Do, 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 do. This is the Amy show. The Amy Schumer sh- sh- shenanigans. Uh, much like Lena Dunham, you know, that era of women is, is over. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. We, they all show their colors. They all show their colors. All I have to say, you didn't mention, speaking of the divas, you didn't mention Ariana Grande. We have a, a new number one album and it, it new number ones across the board. You... If we, for y'all who don't know, Rappi had a public breakup with Ariana um, Cisneros Grande. <laughs> Puccini. <laughs> uh, Boca Raton, Florida. What's the, what was the view? Um, no, I just, uh, I really, uh, first of all, I still love Into You. I think Into You still top 10 for sure. My favorite songs ever i, I love think that, that song one song for like 20, and 50, one 50. last to- uh one last time um that song really got me and still gets me to this day if they play that anywhere focus still gets me these songs uh, all, are about all, to be like a decade old you know i know I, mean? I know i know it's okay it's okay i was in high school um <laughs> <laughs> you were at high schools <laughs> First of all, I wasn't, oh, oh. you were <laughs> but you were <laughs> but you were <laughs> I was paid to be a honey. <laughs> honey. Let's not throw that narrative. Um, <laughs> she really jumped in to Robin's 2018 vault that okay, she did not release okay. when so she you're released talking honey. About, you're talking about you. Eternal Sunshine. She released a song similar. I wanna tiptoe. Um. Oh my God. What's the name of the song now? What's it called? Exactly. Exactly. No, oh, okay. But she, oh, the album. Be but she yeah, was standing the album. But she was standing the album. 
We can't no, be friends. it gave <laughs> We Can't Be Friends, um, which is not only a title of the Ariana Grande song, it's what I feel right now. <laughs> we cannot be friends. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't be friends is number one in my household and apparently in America because she got to go to a mental facility um to get rid of her ex boyfriend Evan Peters because it was hurting her. Oh, so is this much. a music video where she like forgets him? Like, yes, like I don't know some... why she was named the Peaches. She named she made a character that looked just like her name Peaches, but Peaches has a white flower tattooed on her eye. That was a difference, but she acted. I, she acted down in that video, and I said, "Honey, <laughs> Wicked Part One is about to chop. It's about to chop um, a little bit." I'm not gonna lie to you. I, the only thing I remember was that hook where she's like, "I don't want to tiptoe. I don't know whatever," because uh, I think she sampled something else in that uh, song. But I'm sorry. I'm just like I'm just not obsessed. I'm not obsessed. I want to watch her in Wicked. I still will watch anything she. I didn't listen to the album yet. Yet, yet, I'm letting I'm letting Yeti myself on. find out what this album sounds like through all the homosexual stories. Oh my gosh! Like all these gay stories, putting their stories up. Um, so that's that's that that'll be enough for me for a little bit. I love it. You know, nothing personal. I, saw... I still like would be like, okay, girl, hey, Harry. But um, I love it. I love it. So before we get into your reasoning why you gave up on Ariana. My my oh because oh right you bully me out of it doing it. okay got it right got it. okay yeah, got it. truly <laughs> I really like the description I saw it was just like this is like an album where you know you're at a friend's house and you're listening to their curated playlist while you're on an edible and you're just vibing in your own world like that's kind of the vibe it gives and it's definitely that like I don't you definitely smoke have to and be vibe little, anymore I smoke, smoke and vibe dissociate. anymore. Well, we're, we're, 30, we're, we're 30 babes we're 30 we're, 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 we're not 20 thing. we're not 20 we're not 22 anymore you well, know we don't get to just vibe. i'm so happy i look at i smoke and i start thinking about tax <laughs> season okay <laughs> like it's really real now <laughs> so that's why i don't think i related to the album or the songs that i've heard so far i was like this just sounds so like i liked it I, I, just I like mean, what you used to tell me about her though remember you used to tell me oh like her music just is so like like shallow and like doesn't really have anything and it was i said on that at the end of the day you know the era that you were standing ariana was just a weak era for her i would still put yours truly in my everything at the bottom of crazy photography crazy i'm um, obviously dangerous woman gets her up there starts to go to that area and then we start being you know where we are now which is great but like i i didn't think it had a lot of men, you know sentimentality um, a lot of it was I still based in Mac Miller, which is going back to we can't be friends. You know, people were like, she's not mourning her her ex husband; she's mourning Mac Miller, and because there, there was parallels they they drew between the videos and all of these things, um, and that's why it was so heartbreaking. Sometimes it's about just memory; it's not about like wanting a a boy or a person, right? Oh, is that what you took for the music video? I just took like you know, I don't, I don't personalize songs. I just did you read the between vibe. the lines? Can you pull up the lyrics right now? Oh, absolutely. Pull, pull up the lyrics. Tell me, tell me, send me the message right now. We can't be friends. Um, <laughs> just the name of the song. It says, "Yeah, I didn't think you understand me. How could you ever try? I don't want to tiptoe, but I don't want to hide." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't want to feed this monstrous fire. Just let this story die, and I'll be all right. Again, who did not write that at some point on a Tumblr post? It's just it's for the girls. And you wearing that uh, the, the beret, <laughs> reading that, is giving poetry. Um, but yeah, she taps into that that kind of girl. We're all a crazy girl inside, you know. You know, when we were having our, our, we our friends are. our friends discussion, you know, we were having that one discussion, you remember, at dinner about, you know, Lana and Taylor and all these things and how, like, for me, Taylor doesn't work for me because it doesn't hit, you know, as hard. And I feel like Ariana hits just hard enough. It's definitely, like, enough victim in it. Like, I, I, I think that's the best part about her music is that she's victimizing herself. So it allows you to be a victim. Victimhood 2024. I'm so annoyed by people being making themselves a victim and then profiting off of it. I'm just so over it. I I'm mean, like she did so draw some controversy because, you know, that song, The Boy Is but Mine, she, that, that yeah. she did was about essentially her being like, you know, I usually don't do this, but it just the stars align. I wouldn't do it. But here we are. And obviously she's referencing um, her and Ethan Slater. Um, shout out to Silver Spring people. 
Um, see this later. People, not, not residents, <laughs> <laughs> not neighbors, <laughs> not folk, <laughs> people. <laughs> the town's falling. <laughs> it's giving hills energy. It's giving, it's giving <laughs> she lives in the hidden hills. You don't see her. You don't deal with them. You don't see them. Um, but yeah, you know, she's she's making her declaration and people are like, oh, should we like her for cheating? But then people are pretty much on TikTok like, oh, whatever. She still makes good music. And I'm like, exactly. That's how she's got to say it on business. Like, if she cheated, cool. I mean, y'all let um, Keys live. Again, I don't hold that against her. I, she's I've always known she was a messy bitch. Like, girl, down. Cancers are, you know, tend to be on the messier side. Um, but I just, you know, I I haven't been listening really, especially since I started DJing. I really have only been listening to music like that. I am willing to DJ. I did recently download a bunch of Ariana Grande old music, um, older music, um, old to kind music. of like throw in some gay shit because I'll be DJing. from ten years ago. That's the gag part. Like you're like, oh, I liked it ten years. But ago. you're acting, have, first of all, you're acting like that's not gonna hit now. If I play album, into you right now, you. if I play into we you right thank now, thank you next. I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't want to thank you next. Don't play with me. We have all these amazing. I, songs. I still again, y'all. You're you're making it seem like I've dropped her. I I I'm not, I'm not dropped her. I just I'm gonna give myself time to listen to her album. <laughs> Anyways, I am just getting done with a cute little therapy session, so I'm just feeling really nice and cozy. Uh, very emotionally vulnerable right now, Nunu. What else is new? Um, <laughs> I I am not feeling emotionally vulnerable. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling stressed boots. Um, Can you tell the I, I've why? seen so many. No, I've seen so many posts about. You know, it's weird that we are in you know month three of 2024, and there's like no retrogrades going on here, right? There's no retrogrades for another month or three. Um, so all the stuff that's happening is just happening. So there's like nothing to blame, which I kind of live for. Um, but everybody <laughs> I'm seeing on the post and the timeline are like, you know, shout out to people who feel stuck or, you know, right now you're in a bad season, but you're going to smile again. Joy comes in the morning and all these posts. And I'm wondering why, if for any reason, people are having a hard time out there. How are we collectively helping one another? There are people who, when... You know, I would go to clubs, just say I, I'm weighted by the uh, plight in Gaza and in the freedom, the fight for freedom for Palestine. Um, I definitely, when I watched, like, I mean, the Oscars happened last night and people were like, and by the way, Grammys also happened recently, all these Golden Globes. I don't understand how people can really have, like, these Palestine um, fundraisers and then just be like, oh, yeah, let's go to this Grammys watch party i mean i guess you can compartmentalize i find it really like eerie watching these celebrities get together while the world is burning um i don't like to watch it because it really does feel like it's its own kind of sense of royalty and like um like you know like uh, uh, haves and have nots and i'm just not down to feel that narrative because i feel like you know i'm me and not to say they have we got we got an yeah invitation. I haven't watched any I have not watched any award shows. Not season. to say I just that... you know we'll get the recap, but it's just yeah you're right it's just weird to do that. I mean it's fun to find joy in things, but like that just seems so out of touch in a way. If we and... if, if if we got offered a ticket to the Grammys, would you go? Duh, be <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say like I mean I mean doesn't mean like I wouldn't go. No, sorry. Are you dumb? <laughs> but I also just would be on the side of the th because this Oscars did have a celebrity speaking out for Palestine for the first time. You know, I love that Mark Ruffalo has consistently spoken out about it. You know, there's some people who, or even like Hunter Schaefer, just re recently got arrested. Um, oh wow! As a, as, a, as a protester, um, you know, weaponizing her white woman privilege. I said it's kind of cunt, right? I can't tell if that's like performative or not because like if you get arrested, like you know, nothing's gonna happen. You know what I mean? I mean, Hunter Schaefer. I mean, especially I mean, but the, the, I feel like some police will know who Hunter Schaefer is, you know. And um, you never. I I mean, I 
You're saying she's not an A-list celebrity. Okay, new take. Rafi's transphobic. And no, I think she's why. an A-list celebrity. I think that there's still some A-list celebrities that police wouldn't know. Why do you think police know what goes on in the world of Hollywood? What, what about being a policeman or woman? I wouldn't think person? they would. I think they probably do their police stuff. What do you think they do outside of being a police person? Um, well, the, poli- DC police is getting paid more than the mayor right now because they work so much overtime. So I'm assuming they're always police. What? Oh, well, you got um, some tea on the Metro PD. Um, oh my god, I did get a cute Dominican police officer um, be like, oh my god, I like your podcast. I was like, oh my god, I don't know how to feel right now. But Exactly, they are listening to the dame. <laughs> they, are know, they know what the <laughs> girls they. are doing. Well, they, actually, they. They could be a they. No shame. They are, they're um, listening to what the girls are doing. So what do you mean they yeah. don't know an A-list celebrity like Hunter Schaefer? Again, no, no. you are uh, transphobic at this point. <laughs> Um, As I won't. offending me and I, my sister. I'm not going to accept that narrative. Um, I'm just saying that wow. I don't believe that. Every... <laughs> <laughs> as Ooh. much as you try to throw it at me. They. Um, the he they, honey. <laughs> I did watch the, I did watch. I did watch it. I watched the three-part documentary. And it, I, the way I had to watch it in, like, several different sessions. Like, it was not a one watch thing for me at all did you, you watch doing? it how you doing <laughs> um oh yeah so oh, yeah it was God. just really sad um her... <laughs> no shay her publicist said like you know she didn't know she signed up for and that's like not what she wanted to do you know backtracking or whatever <laughs> and i just think obviously it was exploitative um, it was just no other way to put it at the end of the day. I mean, I don't think anyone should be seen in that condition. So no, not at all. I, I think that it was very hard to watch and just stressful. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um and triggering also because you know, I've had uh health issues in my family. And so um I really my heart went out to the sun because I can almost relate to him in a way that was like you know, you want to help, you, you like, do as much as you can, and then, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I obviously am not estranged with my mom, but, but I'm glad that they're now spending more time together, but I definitely can relate to him, and that's feeling like people, like, you know, saying that you could do more, but you're in two different cities, and all that kind of stuff, it really, like, resonated with me. Well, you know, as I've talked with coworkers or even my own mom, you know, when parents get older, it just becomes a second job of sorts. Yeah. Um, and everyone goes through it at different times, of course, is whenever your parents get to that stage. But it truly becomes a second job. And a lot of people, especially in different sectors, you know, of our country, we are we move away, right? And it's hard to maintain that, um, especially in this economy. That's why you gotta, um, you know, play the lottery, stimulate. The- <laughs> um, Just kidding. Yeah, but yeah, but did you watch it? Um, no. Because do you want to just preserve what you know about Wendy Williams? Oh yeah, I think that's a great spin. Honestly, yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> Rafi the publicist. Yeah, that's really that. I, I, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I just don't want to ruin my memory of Wendy Williams. It means so much to me. I mean, it does mean a lot to me. But you know, I don't. I don't know. I'm obviously in. Uh, I am in a stressful era, so I can't feel a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have uh, cut off a lot of my emotional responses, which is really fun. Uh, uh, so I don't. I don't personalize anything um um well let's well. start you know opening that envelope unpacking and seeing what 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 do you feel like your stress is being caused by is it a cars b wigs c your co-host no <laughs> <laughs> Warmer. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely think it's all of the above for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Oh, the same, sweets. 
but you know i do get my car back tomorrow my car has been out of commission for about a week and a half and i am a car person i've never not had a car for that long in my whole life so that no well let's uh, tell the audience what what's happening you're this is not just any car this is my I car. feel like your car is your like your car has been your right. I don't have any emotional pets, capsule. You know, right, exactly. I I can't feel anything for anything alive, but for my car, <laughs> for my car, I feel a lot. You know, I did my whole everything. My teacher career was in the car. Um, breakups. Um, you know, my start of and end of alcoholism. Um, grad school. Yeah. <laughs> Just everything, you know, the driving back and forth. Um, so much happened in that car. Yeah. Make out sessions. It was life. And I, you know, I've had it for so long, eleven years. And, you know, it kind of I didn't give up, but you know, she's getting there. She's getting there. Do you so, feel like you're kind of like saying bye to your twenties? Well, I am in my 20s, but I don't feel <laughs> like it's time to, you know, necessarily say goodbye to that. I just think that. <laughs> but I no, just... for real, like, do you feel like in a sense, like, that is, like, our first chapter in our lives? I can I can relate to that. Well, yeah, so picture it, Sicily. Oh, my God, I can't do that <laughs> reference. That's so terrible. No one's going to get that. Um... <laughs> yeah, because what, what show is that from? <laughs> exactly. Thank you for being comrade. <laughs> um, I think that, you know, 2013, you know, I buy a car on Labor Day weekend, just buy a new car. So I'm about this is new. And it was just there for everything I did. I mean, I cried every time in my car. I cried between internships, between jobs, between people. So that was just my safe space. So to lose it was so, it's so weird. Um, and it throws you for an emotional loop. And again, I'm a car person. I drive every day. Um, so it's just weird. I've never not had a car for this long. It's just, luckily I've gotten rentals. I've been in and out of different cars, but like it is intense. Um, but I'll definitely have to get a new car. And that's super lame because it's like almost like dating. I feel like I haven't shot for a car in over 10 years. Like what, what's going out? I don't know what's out there nowadays. You know, I, I don't want to. What, what do I look for? Who I talk to? <laughs> I don't get it. Um, but you did find like some sort of headhunter car repo man. Oh, <laughs> that's the way to describe it. Um, I have a really nice coworker who likes to be a father figure to just anyone. So when you go there and you're like, I don't even know anything about cars, daddy. Um, <laughs> they can give you a whole list and he really ate that down like he went to cars.com made a whole account for me set the password to like beyonce something and all <laughs> these people in my emails and uh text messaging on a list about all these cars just based on like a five-minute conversation really can't really ate that one that is fierce so what did oh. you have you settled on any car oh my god um so i also <laughs> know nothing about cars which is maybe why my car is going in the fritz um it would cost a couple thousand to get my car like fully repaired but then i was like looking at the invoice and i was like okay obviously you know i need to get brakes or whatever but like who <laughs> okay. gets brakes let's unpack that um <laughs> that's what i wanted to unpack i really want to get to that point. i don't and i wanted to relate to you also to this. i wanted to relate to you also on this because I don't have a car and I don't believe I should ever have a car because yes, I'm a, you're, not, you're not a because driver. I'm a, not because I'm no, because I, yes. I, I yes. only got into one car accident in my life. So. I was there for one of oh, another car accident. You mean multiple. We, I, I was personally there. For what, what car accident were you in? That guy hit us in Chevy Chase. Oh, well, hit us, not me, not me hit them. Well, you, you, you were part of it, honey. I was there in the car. <laughs> you see, I'm, scared girl, for my life. Girl, I'm triggered. I'm triggered. I'm triggered. <laughs> Being blamed for something I couldn't control. Oh my God. I'm, I'm spiraling. Um, no, I, um, I, I actually was not a bad driver, but I just, yes, I were. never, I never cared about upkeep with a car. I never did. And I also am a selfish driver. I will say that. And so, like, yeah. I just don't belong on the road. I don't. I really don't. So that's why I live in a city where I can walk, I can bike, I can do everything that makes me feel free. And Same. finding parking is finding parking is like, garbage, crazy. Mama. Yeah, because new, new Ubers, thank God. Um, 
So I just could never. I, we were kids. I'm too lazy. I can't imagine like actually having to find parking in the city. No, yeah. If I if I I feel like that would be a lot. It'd be too much for me, and that's why I Uber everywhere. I don't care if I'm 15 minutes away, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but I'm Ubering down the house down boots. But all that to say, um, you know, I don't really you know do things for my car as long you know. If, I mean, obviously, obviously the engine light been on for like two three years, but like. If, queer people, if, if, do, uh, back to my point, queer people don't need cars. <laughs> queer people do not need If it's need still cars. running, is the bus still no, running? No. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a gay thing. I don't think it's a queer thing. It's a gay thing. It's I was taught, like, like, you know, you would change your brakes if you hear them squeaking. And I don't, I don't think I hear anything. Obviously, I blast music, so I don't know for sure. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't hear anything. Obviously, you were taking so me to North Carolina again. Three years of the same <laughs> breaks. You know how many times we went to North Carolina. I just feel like I'm a really no good wonder. Driver. I would just naturally my 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 one year in automotives <laughs> gave me the instinct that something's not right with this car. Right, Rafi <laughs> is telling the story that he was a mechanic apprentice at one point, a blacksmith <laughs> apprentice in the coal mines, wielding tools um, just so he could end up with his degree in media art. The boys are back. So the boys me, are back. Tell me about your time being a grease monkey. Um, I did take one year in automotives. Um, not in high school. And, and, and no, well, no, it was a high, in high school. It was a college course. It was like oh, dual like, credit. Oh, okay, <laughs> <laughs> dude, <laughs> you are you so options out there. See, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use this video clip because that eye raise was shady. <laughs> how I drew my face. <laughs> she, she said oh a college credit good for you good for you <laughs> the one you could get into <laughs> was it free <laughs> yeah obviously because i took it obviously you might can afford college you you went to college obviously you can afford it no it was free it was with the school like i was in high school it was That's a high nice. school like yeah so they said boys Take this yeah, like, class. and there was no trade, y'all. There was no trade. There was no trade. There was no trade. Forgettable, forgettable era in my life. Cannot. I knew there was someone that I knew in there, but yeah. But yeah, I don't believe you, in. I, I don't believe in. I should have a car. Like, what I did don't you learn? In, what did you learn from your automotive class? What was it? Uh, uh, did you, did you, did you to, change uh, oil? I, did you know how to change a tire? Do you know how to do anything that I do know how to change person? like a tire? I do feel like if you gave me the, the tools, I would know how to change a tire. I, I do don't believe, I believe that. For I do believe that. I I can t honestly tell you, I don't know how to like check oil. Like I know it's like the I know how to check oil. I don't know what it means. Um, it always looked like oil to me. It was like, okay, it, look, it still looks the same to me. It's chocolate. Um, no. It's chocolate. It literally <laughs> it's like, oil. yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so, yeah, I, but I did learn, like, I think, and I, I genuinely think I could tell you, like, how to do it, take off a tire. Because I also worked with my um, lovely uncle um, at his tire shop. So. The caro. Um, I think that, a G. <laughs> <laughs> no, also what was really embarrassing was, you know, how my car broke down. Um, obviously we had been having some run-ins here and there, but you know, essentially one evening I get a phone call from my apartment manager saying, okay. um, you know, yeah, do something. I was like, what are you talking about diva? And she lets me know that the car was leaking, but it was leaking so much that it was going downstairs, like seeping allegedly through cement down my parking garage to other cars. Um, it was leaking all kind of fluids. Obviously, I don't know what all the fluids are in a car. Um, but when, you know what, though? Rafi did take out of class. There's something he taught me that sticks with me to this day. And it is the fact that American cars... The gas tank is on the passenger side, and for foreign cars, is on the driver's side. Um, yeah, because you put your right hand on your heart. And uh, kiss the sky. I definitely think uh, I love not knowing anything about cars. You know, I just don't know. People are like, what kind of car do you want? I was like, okay, it has to drive. 
uh, with Bluetooth. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I relate by... because I think I think I care more about what the car looks like than what it. Like, I don't even care what it looks like. But also, you know, I, I wouldn't get an American car. No shade. It's... Okay. Not doing an American car. You know, I have been renting a lot of cars, and the car I get the most, I've 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 just driven so many Jeeps at this point. I feel so yeah, American. you love a Jeep. You love and a Jeep I girl. hate the Jeeps. It's so funny. I hate Jeeps. You like you don't? I thought I, I thought you would like a big car, like a big like. Um, I want something. Share what's your name? Share from like, like priceless. Clu- priceless. I this was priceless. Clueless, but I I Clueless. definitely think. Oh. I wanted something cute. I want something small, though. I feel like I'm a small. That's girl. small. I, my dream car when I was a child was a PT Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> that used us <does> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, that is yeah. You're oh, wait, 55. No, no, it wasn't a PT Cruiser. It's always a Mini Cooper. It was a Mini Cooper. A mini Cooper. <laughs> it's you, the same no, thing. you realize that was cringe, and then. Real the back. No, it was a mini go from PT I remember cruiser. because it had like a Union Look Jack flag PT on it. PT Cruiser, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was with a mini cruiser. PT Cruiser had an era, bitch. They were eating for a little bit. That, let's be clear. Yeah, because people were dying. <laughs> <laughs> that car was hideous. 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 I wish they would bring it back though. I wish they would bring it back in a car. I want all the old cars that people you don't understand, y'all. Back in the day we had a game called Underground Need for Speed. What was it? Uh Underground, yeah. Uh Speed Need for Speed Underground. And I feel like all those games made us so into like it normalized cars. having a Honda. It like glamorized having a Honda. No, the cars I was obsessed with on the games was like Escalades and like Hummers. Like I would only want the biggest, giantest car. I, and I was like, why would I? I was like Escalade. Like you got to have an Escalade, bitch. Like that was it in the two thousands. So. <laughs> oh, the Hummers. First of all, that is a suit because our Hummers even a thing anymore. But you can't even afford a Hummer with the gas. But also, it kills the environment. Like it's literally so. But terrible. is it a thing? Like you don't see Hummers. My favorite thing, um, that car. I mean, the only cars that are in now are what Teslas. Teslas are kind of lame though. No shade. Teslas are. I mean, I. I mean, I'm no shade to any Tesla owner. I just like I wouldn't get one because it's that door. That door is crazy. The... the door is annoying, and I, I mean, no shade. I mean, we have this debate all the time, but isn't it weird when your Uber driver has a Tesla? It throws my whole day off. I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna un un um? Yeah, because you have to start thinking. Like, door. Oh you have my to, God. Like... He has to do the thing, and then he has to do the thing for the door, and then you have to be pressed it in, and then you have to sit. Yeah, in I'm there not trying to open the that. window. One day you're gonna open the fucking window in that car, and you're gonna open the fucking door and fall out of the the fucking thing. So you would never get any kind of Tesla. Um, no, because Elon Musk makes some. That's why. Like, I don't think they're an ugly car. I think they're cool. Like, I think they genuinely do. I like the, uh, like, the whole, like, sky room or sky ceiling, whatever thing it has. But, like, I'm not going to support Elon Musk. But you would support Toyota and Honda. No, I feel like if I'm going to get a car at this point, it's going to be luxury. Fuck that shit. Um, if I, like, yeah, honestly, everyone kept I, I would only that, get but... it if I need it. And if I get a car... I would want a nice car. I'm not. You don't want to like think about the area you live in. Like I like I feel like sometimes being in the city, you know, they really might jack you for that car. And I feel like I always want like an inconspicuous car. Like I'm not trying to be no. Too they flashy, say that actually. They say that the cars that most likely to get. Uh, it's not the Porsche. No, I mean, well, well, no. Yeah. Oh well, I will <laughs> say I was in France. I was in Paris, and there was um, uh. A car, uh, like a Ferrari or something, in the street, and it got his windows bashed in, which was crazy. I would um, definitely be more conscious. I again, I would only get a car if it made sense. So I would have probably a garage or a driveway. It's, it has to be like a luxury kind of thing for me because I don't genuinely like to drive. So if I had the money, it would only need to be like, oh, I have a car. But it would, I would probably be driven around like you do. I would probably like be I like you. I drive every day. What are you talking about, bro? Yeah, but like most of the time when you're not working, you I'm an amazing driver. Around. No accidents, no tickets. I mean, you are a fair, you are a great driver, but you are a Looney Tune driver. You're a North Carolina driver down. No. Down. But yeah. to to speak to that, when I was in North Carolina recently, I saw so many accidents and I was like, why do people down here could not drive? I was like, and the accidents were so crazy to the point where like, I, you know, when you can, you look at the road and you're like, I can't even figure out how you did that. <laughs> like, I mean, it would be such intensity where they would just be slamming into the poles or just end up halfway 
turned over on the forest. And I'm like, there's not even traffic. There's nothing happening. How do you just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, no, y'all, you and other North Carolina drivers are so obsessed with driving so close. These ba- massive fucking 18 wheelers. Those, first of all, have you ever been hit by 18 wheeler? No, but I think 18 wheelers do not belong close to other cars. I don't believe where are they gonna go in their own 18 wheeler lane, like this lane, a whole lane. They should not be close to any other car ever, 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 ever. Who I just cannot stand America. America is so unserious. America said, Hey, let's put a little Toyota. Next to this giant fucking eighteen wheeler, and you even, especially when Nuna drives, you feel that car pick up. You need a big car for sure because you're so tiny. We're gonna be picked up with a small car. Oh my god! So, uh, as someone who's actually been hit by eighteen wheeler, and <laughs> doesn't have a legitimate fear because I I went through it, bitch. I survived, honey. I saw death in the face and kept moving. That's why I don't give a fuck about no motherfucking eighteen wheeler, ho. Bitch, I am the eighteen wheeler, and that's on my soul. Um, no, I actually have been hit by eighteen wheeler, but you know what? You get in hit, the highway, hit, huh? In the highway? No, no, this is just a regular road. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> we were actually standing, uh, sitting still at the light, and that's just, the scariest thing. Yeah. And we and it just we were taking it. We were in the right lane to turn right, and it was not in the right lane, but it was trying to do a wide turn. So like when we were going, it went, and it just like sliced all of our car. Off, off the oh, road. Oh um, my god! What did you feel? Did time slow down? Um, I feel like in the first few accidents, time slows down, but after a couple more, it gets a little normal. At that point, I was like, "Oh my god, really?" <laughs> Is this why you pride yourself at being a good driver? Because you have been in so many car accidents. I was in so many car accidents before I got my, you know license obviously i was not the driver during that so i learned so much about accidents and what can happen what can't so i feel like i'm a really good driver because of that um and i love being on the drive i love road i love just associating smoking my weed and just rolling down the highway at breakneck speeds i love it um i'm i'm not a fast driver i don't like driving fast i I always go to the fast lane i try to on the highway if i on a regular day but if i'm like traveling four hours i don't care that much i'm like putting on cruise control I'm a 70 girl. 70 is perfect. 70 is perfect. Seven inches. Perfect. Yeah. That's what I'm wearing. I was like one time I was driving this weekend. I was definitely like 85, 90. And I was like, ooh. Again. Again. And with no brakes. Imagine. <laughs> no bars. This is, wow. Imagine. <laughs> is she listening to A, Lady Gaga. B, Lana Del Rey. Okay. It's, it's B, y'all. It's B. It's always B. Um, I just think cars are just a fun little house on wheels. So I I can't wait to replace. <laughs> but if any of you all have any car recommendations, feel free to DM us if you have a discount or if you want to give me a free car. Like for yeah. sure, if you want to give Nuno a free car, please. But uh, please be a big. Wait, don't do it. I want car. Nuno to be a big car. Yeah, please. So my least favorite thing about the specific Jeeps was the auto driving. The auto driving shit be pissing me the fuck off, y'all. Um, it's supposed to keep you safe, isn't it? Yes, it's but like, cut- I, I get- oh no, I will. I've been in a car where I can tell it makes me feel unsafe. The car I was in was like constant, like the it, it it was sensitivity was set so high, like you couldn't even be like <laughs> near another <laughs> line, and it would just keep correcting you. And I was sitting there like diva. <laughs> if you want to drive, drive a car, the car. Just, just drive, drive the car. it. Like you know, if you want to drive it, you drive it. It's like why am I trying to fight a car? I mean, that was really bad. <laughs> That makes me feel so nervous. I that's why I don't drive, y'all. I really don't drive as much as I can. I try not to drive. I can drive, but I don't. And renewing my license is gonna be the scariest day of my life. Oh my god! I just feel like once you drive once, you know how to drive for the rest of your life. They should just trust you at that point. But like, do they when your license expires? Do you have to redrive again? I don't know. I got when I got my license up here, I didn't do it. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to do that soon because I'm not. Uh, you're that job. old that you have to get your license redone. Oh. No, not anytime soon. Not the ooh, soon. Ooh, ooh. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't. Um, this, this will be a sad day when you actually do age out of your license. Oh my god. 
I just can't imagine aging out. Like, this is what I look like on my license. Yes. Yes. Yeah, actually, that is the face that I see. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know. Um, um. I, I, all that to say, where was I driving to? <laughs> I was driving. But, but no, what cars do you, what cars are you looking into? I really want you to make a wise decision here. Um, you know, obviously my preference, we have a Nissan Kicks because it's <laughs> cute. <laughs> We've talked about this. We have well, talked about this. Well, it was just this. so cute and it was fun. And I really want like a, a compact SUV. I just want something easy and, you know, do, 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 do. I understand that, <laughs> but I've never heard of that. And that means I know that a I mean, probably probably like, oh, a smart yeah. car, so I probably won't do that, but that's what I want. You tell me my preference is what I want. I I, I know, I know. You you said a kick. Raise your hand if you know what a Nissan kick says. <laughs> <laughs> um the three uh the three owners of the Nissan Kicks do not listen to this podcast. I promise you that. There's some interesting uh, cars out there on the road. I saw a wagon. No, they here. are. Did you see that Kia updated their logo? Oh my! Oh wait, no. What was that? Kids oh, are not that Kia. reliable. Oh, also the car I wanted the most when I was younger, actually, and until my aunt got one, was a Honda Element. I was obsessed. Why are you obsessed with discontinued cars? <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. I just you. love a little box car <laughs> that I can just drive. Like I imagine the like most a clown coolest, car, like a little clown car, just like, getting coolest, out. The coolest, the only, the coolest car dupe, uh, and like the. A discontinued car was a Toyota, whatever it was that looked like a Hummer. Their 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 Hummer dupe. That car. My mom ate. has one. She she drove that. She has one. The Toyota. What's FJ it called? Cruiser. Yeah. You were about to drive the FJ Cruiser. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Why you want? A no, I don't want. I, I hate it. She <laughs> loves big kicks. cars. I hate that car. It's too big. And, and kicks. No, but it's still a discontinued car. That car a got Nissan discontinued. kicks, honey. Um, no, I I really do suggest you get you know the, the ones that you know the ones that have stuck around. The why would I take car advice RAV4s. from someone who did you pass the automotive class? I did. <laughs> I duh. I didn't fail it. I've never failed any class. Oh, good for you. This is why I struggle with piano. I mean, I think that's normal. I don't think most people fail classes, right? If you do, then. Oh, uh, the fact that you thought I did, though. That's what I'm saying. That's, that, that's the shade. I mean. That's the shade. You did, but you, you, I'll let you, you live. No. I n- <laughs> <laughs> In my fantasy, <laughs> I never feel that class. <laughs> I didn't fail that anything. Man. You Those said theories. I failed the whole grade. <laughs> she ran out of me. But you are not my friend. <laughs> you said you you failed the whole grade. Man. <laughs> You're dumb. <laughs> no, I just think I think you needed it. I yeah, no, I did it. get I did get ketchup on my SATs. You're right. You're dumb. I, I had to get the SATs uh, recently. Huh? I had to get the SAT. Oh recently. my God. What is that like as an adult? So like, and that just fun. Made, it made me so nervous. So fun. This is their kids' know. lives, isn't it? It's so fun. I live. I live. I love watching people in pressure. I want y'all to know I love watching people struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Plain Jane. Plain Jane. Ooh. No. Um, I get the SAT recent recently. So I want you to know we're in 2024. So obviously. We're in the digital SAT era, okay? We're in the digital SAT era, and it is not your mother's SAT, let me tell you. Um, you know, when we were growing up, we had books and locations, and it definitely took, like, four hours, and it was really intense. But now the kids just have a computer. They go to the Blue Book app, honey, put their little ticket code in you print out and then they just sign in and that's it. And then as a test proctor you, on your TV, on your little screen, you just see them check in and you say, okay, I'm starting the test. And it just little prompts you. It's just like, read this now, click start test. And they do everything else by themselves. They break on their own time. If they get finished early, they go to break. I mean, it's just everything's on their own. And then and they just submit and you don't have to do anything. And I don't have to pass out books and there's no test booklets and there's, there's, there's just... no scantrons. No, it's none of that. That's so dead. I just be sitting there living my life, doing my work. I loved it. I lived it. I, I, I love where we're at now. But it is fun watching them still have to bring out like TI-80, wherever number we're on now. Um, calculators oh and they're more God. digital. Wait, they have no, they... W- well, there's new calculators? 
You don't think calculators are going to upgrade? You don't think there's calculators for internet and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, honey? And what do those do now? What was it All for? All that shit, bitch. Is, it, is there new math? I mean, no. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> so, oh, I mean... There might I mean, be. I'm all for evolving technology, but what's the point of Wi Fi with the original TI 89, whatever it's called? The well, maybe TH... we can just do more. Maybe we can, like, you know, teach you or something. I don't know. Um, no, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I believe in our schools. But that's really cool. That's I, really I, cool. I, that I makes it that's... so paperless and so fun. I mean, they still stress out, but that's whatever. Um, I just think it, it enables, just like you, like, it'd be weird if you had a kid because, like, there's be such a gap in parenting now. I think the gaps in parenting and technology. We are the parents. No, it's just like the gaps are different. Like, you know, when our parents were parenting, they were like, yeah, there's an SAT and I might have taken it. And it was an old test and you sit there and you take it. That's exactly what we did. But like, after us, it's not like that. Like, it's a whole different test. Everything's different. Like, it's, there's nothing the same. And it changes all the time. I couldn't imagine having to keep up with it. Well, you do. Yeah, but that's just You're point. in it. Oh, like you're not, you mean you're, do you don't think you want to do it for an actual kid? Yeah. No, yeah. no. You know, I went to my first baby shower recently. Oh. Have you ever been to a baby shower? Um, The only baby shower that I remember is my own because there's a video of it. And I, my, it's a fun, there's a funny moment in it. The baby, you mean, you mean your mom's baby shower? Yeah, of me. I was in the belly. Yeah, hey, cameras back then. Okay. <laughs> That seems weird, honestly. That seems pretty advanced that sounds, for that age. So, uh, yeah. Did you have cameras at your baby show? No. Damn. No. We're not the I... same age. Because <laughs> 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 I definitely had a camera voice. Um, and they had color They, they, it, they so. had an iPhone, but they didn't have a, <laughs> a video camera in mine. <laughs> Also, that's weird. Imagine having your baby shower on a fucking iPhone, Viva. Like the first life. Can you imagine? That'd be gaggy. Oh, that'd be kind of gaggy. That'd be terrible. Those those iPhones were not made for that. What but it's true. Now? Like the kids born in 2009 or 10 now, that's what freshmen are. Um, like they could have all their moments on like an iPhone or an Android, honey. The first Android. Imagine. Crazy, 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 crazy. Um, but yeah, you. Um, I, this the- is my first baby shower. I expected it to be like a baby shower. Um, I do think baby showers have changed um, in the modern time. Why I don't know it? why. Um, if anyone knows, I watch a lot of rob coms, and I, I just really have a traditional idea of what womanhood is based on a lot of these girlfriend TV shows. Were like, you expecting, like, high tea? I was expecting, like, you know, everyone to be dressed up, and we're celebrating the baby, and there's an outfit, and there's a theme, and, you know... Very real housewives. Yeah, it's like a little wedding reception, but it's like a baby shower. <laughs> okay. It was not that. It was not that. It was at a bowling alley. Um however I thought it, you said it was in the least suite. At the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Yeah. You want to talk about being a fucking publicist. <laughs> I literally pictured you in Gossip Girl. No, it did give that. It did give that. So I, we, I was were, we were at a location that was one of those luxury bowling places. So we, me and my mother had a discussion because I saw the location and I didn't know what to wear. And she was like, you would just be casual. And I was like, well, why? No. And, like, and she was like, well, you're going to be bowling. And I was like, why would I bowl? She was like, it's at a bowling alley. I was like, I assume there was some rec room, some party luxury area we would be sitting in. Maybe they had a nice, you know, veranda somewhere. I don't know. Um, but no. Um, all to say, it was casual because people were bowling, and there was laser tag and escape rooms and arcade. Oh, they, because this, it was a kid centered. Were there a lot of kids there? Um, I counted uh, under eight kids. Okay, so there was eight to... kids. That's fair. They thought I think it was more kid centered then. Let's okay, say eight that. kids, but you know, fifty adults. That is a ratio. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But did you have fun? That sounds so like it, you still have fun. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you know the bowling alley. You know we know one of those luxury ones. So I love that. I love that for y'all. 
all that to say, I was just like, I can't believe I would bowl. And they were like, why would you, why wouldn't you bowl? And I was like, bowling. And you tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think, I, don't, I think for people in our generation right now, at our age group, I don't think bowling is like the go-to. Like if you were an older person, I'd be like, yeah, of course you want to bowl. You're older. And if you were a, a baby, I'd be like, of course you want to bowl. You're a baby. But like, I could not imagine anyone in my real life being like, be speaking about bowling. Like that just seems weird to me. Um, I mean, I, if I was, I, I thought you were going to be at like more like a tea or like, I thought that's what, that's what a baby shower was. I thought it was, I pictured like, you know, finger foods and just like, fit also like, I feel like 50 people is a lot for a baby shower. Oh, really? Oh, you, would you want something more? Randomly? I thought I, I kind of viewed it like a quinceanera. No. Oh, you want as many gifts as possible. I think that's smart. I think it's smart to have a lot of people come to your <laughs> Well, show. all that to say, we were at the, it's a luxury bowling alley. I love that for y'all. Um, I like the fact that, you know, there's there's bars now and there's, you know, I love arcades now. You know, speaking of like the digital modern things, like I was an arcade kid, like a, 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 a I don't know what they call them, but like, I love Chuck E. Cheese. I love Celebration Station growing up. I love oh, Celebration all these Station. Things. And so that's something we would do with my cousins. Like we would go and I would get tickets and I would get the most tickets. Like I'm one of those kids, right? I'm a gamer, right? Yeah. So I going back to the arcade for the first time in a long time, I love it. There's arcade games, it's on a car, everything's digital. Tickets are digital. Everything's digital. I just love that. You just swipe and go. Um, there weren't that many kids, but they did have a lot of drink tickets. They had a lot of game cards, and they had a lot of free food. I got my drink on here. I got my eat on, honey. And I took a, at least 60 to $70 worth in game cards and just had fun with my man around all these children. Okay. But it was a lot of fun games because they got the good stuff. They had the first game we played. I thought I did this for Rafi. Was the Lara Croft Tomb Raider um, shooting oh my game? God. And it was like a story oh. mode. It was like the actual like Tomb Raider game, where you could like swipe and do the. That's the, so you know. cool. So fun. So I had a lot of fun. I was drinking. I was smoking. Um, I was eating. I did miss all the important parts. I did miss the cutting of the cake. I did miss. The, <laughs> So you were not <laughs> at the baby shower. You well, it was cute. We were in you didn't want least cake. Least. At least got to the cake, girl. No, I, I got cake. I went there okay. for the cake cutting. Uh, <laughs> um, it was an elite suite, though. It was really cute. Private bowling lanes, private dining area, all that okay. fun stuff. So okay. I was just living. I was obviously the only people like in our age range. Um, you know, people either were parents or children okay. or older. So it was a really cute date night. <laughs> I, I love a baby shower date night. That's fierce. Um, and it was just very casual. It couldn't have been me, but um, I love that for them, and I can't wait for um the baby. I guess. Um, I mean, baby showers, I guess, have evolved, but yeah, I, I like the. I think there's probably like probably like, I mean, my mom's probably invited. Did probably invite like at least fifty people to ours too. But I just like a nice little intimate gathering, you know. And that's what was so fun about this because there were so many people, and when there's a the bigger the party, the more intimate it is, right? Because um, then you and your person yeah. become invisible, and you can sneak away, and it's just so oh fun. for yeah, like for our young selves now, for not like if we don't want to be part of the situation. But if I actually care about my friend, and like she invited all these people. I have to like now also like entertain. I lived. I found some really cute baby shower um gift wrapping at the dollar store. Oh my hooked, god! Look hooked, at you planning. And I hooked her up. Do you want to? Do you want to start shopping for a little cat or a dog? No. I can imagine. I thought about it. I was like, imagine me getting a cat in this place right here. I would. Would you rather cat. have a baby, a dog, or a cat? A dog. Or a drag child. Oh, drag child. I can keep him away. Oh my god, who do you want? Can you make me your drag child? Um, no, you have to be able to dance and keep. Uh, oh, please, <laughs> oh, please, girl. <laughs> actually, for the house of parents, you actually don't have to dance, child. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You do that dancing as a main ability here yeah, in the house shimmy. of parents. The Nunu Shimmy eats every time. And you got to walk, though. You got to be able to walk, though. Nunu, you gotta the be house able of to walk Nunu. in one inch or higher heels. Um, for sure. That's, that's good. Um, 
but yeah um but so i'm glad you had a good time i'm glad because you said you you know it was gonna be like you know interesting going back and dealing with like a, a child coming in at this era oh so weird so not weird. even like uh, just any child like someone's like you know child a baby baby but you know i can't wait for airy season when we welcome the baby i hope it's safe but and no complications and i wish i could say the same for the protests that are happening in dc there's so many things i don't i feel like do you feel calm in the city between cars trying to run over people and um that was intense i think that uh we are in just like a very dystopian time um and people are just you know i i genuinely feel like i've been having some anxiety i don't walk around with music a lot anymore um with my airpods if i have my airpods is strictly for like social yeah i couldn't imagine listening to music in like public for real for real like if i'm in an uber i'm like have the headphones in but like i'm not listening to i'm not listening to music i'm the uber i'm definitely listening like you know because i just don't I feel like there's always I'm on edge. Um, something could happen. And I don't like feeling like that. And I don't know if everyone's feeling like that, but I feel like the majority of us, you know, would say that mm-hmm. we don't we can't just live our lives as carefree as maybe once we could. But we'll get back to her one day once we uh get through this next amazing election. I think it's only gonna get worse. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, it's always dark. Are you kidding me? The are we really? This one this is such a mind fuck. It's like, are we really going through another election? Like, we like ha, what? Like, why? Like, why? Let's just keep let's let's honestly just keep fighting because he hasn't done anything. But we, if if Trump is gonna be the next president, this think man, it, that Trump should be in jail. Trump should be in jail. Israel and Palestine. I mean, I think Biden did a lot. I mean, uh, and for his Palestine, whole and his no, whole, and his whole platform was canceling student loans. Yeah, my loans ain't being canceled. Yeah, for sure. So, so who are you saying? Who's been speaking for Palestine? I mean, it's not like they were like, "Oh yeah, we want a ceasefire." He was, you know, aiding Israel. No, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. But what are we like? Th- there's, n- I mean, you can't I, say he didn't I, do anything. I thought it was so. I hate when people are like, "Just vote, bitch!" Like, or like, the the worst thing you can do is not vote. Shut the fuck up. Ooh. You can vote, but like, what is happening? Like, who are we voting for? You watched the Joe whole Biden? RuPaul episode about voting and doing a power anthem just for you to tell people on this podcast not to vote in the, our nation. No, I'm vote. saying vote. I'm saying hey. vote. I'm registered to vote. I am registered to vote. So don't play with me. I am registered to vote, but it does feel like what's the fuck? I don't want to vote for Joe Biden, and and well, I maybe hate... he'll die and we'll get Kamala Harris. I hope that she, you know, does well as well. You are wishing on. Someone's downfall. Wow. No, I really want them to do well. Trust me, I live in this country. I don't want this. Uh, I don't want this country to go downhill because I live here. But let's be clear. I just, you know, I just everyone, everyone that we have up there is part of the system. Every single person. It's just like whatever, whatever. But and that was no, don't do it. <laughs> that's why don't do it. No, it's I whatever. really. It's <laughs> really just like it's hard to talk about because I don't want to like. And we're telling you to wait. Don't dissociate. Participate in the voting process. Yes. Keep, <laughs> keep going out to the protest. Keep calling for a ceasefire. Um, what do you think about people going for Mo Bowser um, and to speak up for Palestine? I think that she should have spoken for Palestine because all of the... Considering all these things that are happening in her city. But all of the... I think it's... But I think she can't acknowledge it. Because it Did is the a guy reflection. Set himself on fire. It, we are living in a reflection of like we're not to that extreme, but like I said, there is a haves and have nots in DC, and there is like who gets the investments, who gets the grocery stores, who gets the infrastructure and the planning. It's very clear, and so I just it's really weird. And then the person who literally set themselves on fire because they do not want to go fight in Gaza. Could you imagine being in that position? It's just, and everyone imagine doing all that, and then people just still don't do anything or don't care. And then if you were caring about the reward show or shade or oh, Eternal Sunshine now streaming, like why are we watching? I, 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 in the internet space, 
why are we watching the Grammys when all you have to do is go through the internet and watch the recaps? Imagine if no one watched the Grammys. Imagine. Imagine. You just watched the recaps. Imagine. They didn't plan for it, but we all just fuck the Grammys. We're not tuning in. If we see anything, we'll see it on the fucking, uh, on all the, on the blogs. But they would fucking gag that no one tuned into the Grammys that year. But we have the power, people. We do. We really do. We really do. But we just have to like literally activate together. So wait. Together. Let's not watch the Grammys next year. Let's just watch the fucking things they're gonna release later. Uh, and then honestly, you're gonna see it. And don't but don't watch it on the fucking websites. Just watch it in the in the interwebs. And Black I'm gonna web. tell you to wait. Get that engine checked out that light might mean something yeah yeah or, something. or else your your car is gonna get totaled but it's not actually gonna be actually like like roof caved in it's gonna be like total because it's worthless it's, the, 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 and this happened to me too with my Toyota matrix rest in peace the the mechanic said listen this my mechanic would never say that because i would never give up my baby honey i would never give up my baby um you how do you talk to your mechanics? I feel like you're probably like, so like, what's the verdict? Oh, is that a good impression? Um, you know, I did have uh, another man go speak to the mechanic for me <laughs> because I just, I just feel like talking to straight cis men, especially mechanic. I just that's just like not. It's like going to a barbershop, right? It's just like <laughs> it's just like not something i want to do or i understand because they don't get it and i'm like i need that's you to so view, cut I need you to that's me. so cut you ate that you, <laughs> ate that. <laughs> you have been whipped for you in every <laughs> space i, I always keep me up <laughs> somewhere i always keep a man doing something bitch that's how you keep it going <laughs> Oh, so but fun. if you want to see us going, you can catch us C- this the script. weekend. Catch the script. <laughs> this weekend at Conic Cinto, hosted by Every Pleasure, with performances by some amazing drag artists, but most importantly, hosted by DJ Raffi. That's this March 16th at JR's. What time does it start? Um, oh my God. Oh. It starts at no, yeah, it starts at nine thirty, y'all. I'll be there at nine thirty at JR's. I'm super excited. Thank you um, to DJ Andre for hooking me up with it, and every pleasure for having me. It's really exciting. Um, and so yeah, come check me out. You don't have to. I I really want people that have come to Reggaeton Brunch and to like Better Fridays back when I was doing that party to come through. Because it's going to be a good night. It's going to be a really good Here night. Here he is. And we're all going to be partying this weekend. Um, And just to prepare you, on Palm Sunday, you can catch me at Takata 14 at Black Opal Brunch on March 24th. You can also catch me back at JR's on April 5th for a Drag Race viewing party. And that's right before our next reggaeton brunch on April 13th, followed by our 420 brunch. The next week, honey, we are booked and busy, and we are so excited yeah. to party with y'all from now until the end of summer, honey. It's lit. It's getting hot. Uh, daylight savings and fucked up my sleep schedule, so it's time to party, bitch. Yeah. Period, y'all. Make sure you and follow you us. To, oh. I was going to say thank you to everyone who came to Reggaeton Brunch this weekend. Oh, my God. We missed you, Nunu. We really did. I missed you, for sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I Likewise, I'm sure. I miss <laughs> I, it was not clo- closing out the show was not the same. I rushed through that closing because I was like, it, 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 what? First of all, I had to get to the music, but um, I just close. I it ha- it's not the same without closing with Gunner of the Barrio. You have to. Yeah, that'd be it. so weird. I thought about that. I was like, how do you close it? <laughs> and I was not about to ask one of these girls. No shade. I love all the girl, all the performers that came and performed with us. Love them. Um, but I'm not gonna perform with anybody but you. Come on now. And yeah, I'll perform with any and everybody. For the right money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all saying on business. Um, Make sure you follow your girl at Nunu Paris on Twitter, TikTok, Twitter, <laughs> TikTok, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. I was going to get there at one point. Facebook, maybe. Um, threads. All, all the things. So you can see the latest updates. 
Raffy, where can they find you? Of course, y'all can always find me at Wait Don't Do It Podcast. You can find me at Reggaeton Brunch DC. You can find me at I don't want to say any of these gay bars anymore because you know I don't go out anymore. But you can definitely find me at Reggaeton Brunch every second Saturday and at Con Accento coming up. And always at New New Paris's gigs. Because I love her. Oh my gosh. Shout out to the best cameraman in the city. Not the camera. The cameraman. The cameraman. Crazy. Ah, Crazy. ah, Crazy. See you next time, booze.